What's up everybody, Trolling Gaming here. I just want to make some kind of like rambling video maybe about a certain topic that I thought would be pretty interesting. I watched this uh, YouTube video of a guy called Bryheart who was basically talking about, you know, are games getting boring nowadays? We see a lot of these companies make the same kind of games. I myself have been complaining about that, mainly with, you know, the typical Ubisoft open world games and stuff like that. And I wanted to uh, pretty much give my own, you know, spin on the topic, I guess. And Many times I get people that come to me and that, you know, ask me like, Robin, do you sometimes have that as well, where you just get tired of playing games and you don't feel like doing that at all? I, I wanted to, I guess, give my sort of general advice or my experience with that because, you know, I have that, like, I, I've had that many times before. Just these moments where, uh, you know, for a good month or something, when maybe it's a dry period out there, or even sometimes when, like, massive releases are, are yeah, are, are coming out, that I still feel like I really don't want to play these games at the moment, you know, I just don't feel like it at all. And I think that's totally fine, first of all. I really think that if you have this kind of moment where you feel like you don't want to play any games, don't play any games. That's sometimes even better, I feel. And, um, you know, yeah, you, you're not forced to play games, right? So in that way, I would say, yeah, you're totally not in any way, uh, you know, nobody's telling you to, to, to still, you know, feel forced to play them. Like, take a break, go do some other stuff, do stuff that you actually, you know, feel ambitious in, uh, about or, or enthusiastic or whatever, and then return to your games at a later time, and you'll always find that after a while, I have had that myself as well, that after a few weeks, you know, all of a sudden I feel like playing games again, it just, it just happens, but at the same time, um, you know, I, I guess, like, what I really try to do to to still be entertained by games is actually to try and play as many of them as possible. And that's, like, the, the biggest piece of, you know, advice I would give to people that feel like they're, they're bored of playing games. I see so many people out there that just play the same kind of games all over again the whole time. And, you know, it's no wonder that people are hating on the whole Call of Duty and FIFA crowd. Uh, people like to do that, right? And I think it is for the most part that those people don't look beyond their their little box that they have you know they don't feel like actually trying something new and uh you know you're gonna you're gonna see gaming is an expensive hobby let's be honest about that and so many people will are not willing to spend 60 bucks on a game they don't know if they're gonna like you know what i mean in that way people will always try to stay in their comfort zones and i'm not gonna say that i don't have that myself i do uh in the end, you know, the games I myself always look forward to, uh, you know, come down to a certain type of genre. At the same time, I do try to, within a certain subcategory of what I know are games I like. For example, me myself, I know for myself that I really like both story-driven games and games that have super tight gameplay. Just great controls that are fun to play. Uh, it's those two games, or type of games, I guess. You know, it's a really broad, broad category, I would say. It's not tied to a certain genre, like a first-person shooter, or like an RPG or anything. It could be anything. And in that way, I'm not really restricting myself uh, to certain games except for demanding quality in terms of either story or gameplay that's really all I'm asking for um, and so I do try to play different games like you'll see me play the typical Uncharted and stuff which is you know my personal favorite series uh, but you'll also for example now just now I, I bought Resident Evil 7 this is my first time playing Resident Evil uh, I recently for example like a few years ago I've shared, shared that with you I played Metal Gear Solid for the very first time a game series that I knew absolutely nothing about, that I just looked a bit up from it basically and I started playing it and now it turned out to be one of my favorite series ever. And I think when you always look back at games that, that blew you away, you'll you'll probably, you know, remember that those games, it's been a while since you played them most likely, like the games that really blew you away are the games that you just didn't see coming. So when I played the very first Uncharted back in the days in 2009, I, I freaking loved it because I'd never played something like that before. When Uncharted 2 came out later in 2009, I was once again blown away. That's why that game made such an impact on me, because it took everything I already loved from that first game and it brought it to the absolute next level, you know what I mean? That's why it had such an impression on me. And I think about multiplayer games I loved, Modern Warfare 2. Why did I love it so much? Well, because it was the first time I actually played a first-person shooter multiplayer that much and I was really that into it. Um, 
Red Dead Redemption with its great open world and story, one of the first times I myself had that type of experience. It's always when you try something new and it actually it resonates with you and it sticks and you enjoy it, that's when it's gonna leave that impression on you and when you're legitimately gonna enjoy it. And I just see nowadays that uh, it, it's been something that's been there forever, don't get me wrong, but some people play first-person shooter after first-person shooter and I get that you might, for example, enjoy the, jo the genre, but whether you're gonna go from Overwatch to Doom to Call of Duty to Battlefield to you name it, in the end you're doing the same thing all over again. You're shooting people in a first-person view. And I get that there's gonna be differences between those genres, don't get me wrong, and in that way there might be variety there for you, but it's not like a massive amount of variety. And my biggest, like, my biggest advice to people out there, to my subscribers as well, well, is do try something new. And once again, I'll say that one more time. Uh, I've had my I've had my sort of mistakes that I've made. For example, I spent 60 bucks last year when I bought Deus Ex: Mankind Divided because I'd never played really you know a game like that, and I thought I was gonna maybe enjoy it. I didn't enjoy it at all. I played two hours of it and I was so done with it. It was not my game at all, and I wasted 60 bucks on that. And I don't in any way want you to you know waste your money on something that uh, in the end you're not gonna like at all. But try to look up, for example, some, some games that are within the type of category you, you like. Like I said, I like games with a good story, with very tight gameplay. Look for games within the category you like yourself that are not necessarily tied to a genre or something like that. And play those for once. If you've never tried Resident Evil like me... Play it if you think it could interest you. Just do that. Try to take some more risks. And I think if you do go for that, in the end it's going to pay itself off. Because, you know, innovation is just what you need in life, I think. And if you get it, you're just going to feel a lot more engaged and enthusiastic about it. And yeah, you'll just enjoy games more when they give you an experience you've never had before. And, you know, once you do that, it's going to feel fresh again returning to a genre you do really like, for example, where you're going to play a new game in that same installment. Anyway, I hope I kind of made it clear. You know, I looked at some 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 games, for example, that I really love myself recently. Uh, Rayman Legends. Nobody bought that game. I've been, I've been really, like, beating the drum on that, I guess, for the last few months now, uh, promoting that even more. I don't know why, because it came out in 2003. 13, but like that game was so awesome to me. I already loved platformers, but just seeing what it did, that amazing art style that it had, blew me away. It was a game I super enjoyed among all the, you know, the, the other typical games that I was playing at that time. Uh, Last year I played The Last Guardian, there were plenty of things wrong with The Last Guardian, but the story was so great and it was a game that was unlike anything else, and in that way I still really had my enjoyment out of it and was pretty hooked to it. You know, Ratchet and Clank had such tight gameplay, yes, it was a game that uh, was very much like its predecessors already, it's not like it really does anything new, but, but I had not played a Ratchet and Clank game since 2009 pretty much with a crack in time. It had been 7 years since I played something in, in that genre again. Again, that's why I loved it so much. Take your time, try different things, that's in the end what I would recommend you to do if you feel like you're getting, uh, you know, just bored of, of playing games, because I think it might not just be, uh, you know, the actual, yeah, the actual fact that you're getting bored of playing games, it's, it's more that you get bored of playing the same type of games all over again, so, uh, yeah, let me know if that counts for you or not, let me know what you thought about this video, pretty much, uh, the, the, the speech I gave you, the advice, and uh, if you have any advice, then yeah, give people that in the comments, I'm sure everybody would appreciate it. Uh, including me. So with that being said, thanks a lot for watching everyone and I hope to see you again next time.